Good morning. How are you? We are on day seven. It's our last day together. Thank you so much for um, tuning in. I wanted to share um, as, a, as a way to thank you. Uh, I wanted to share some of my favorite books with you um, to sort of celebrate our seven days together and some really important book titles that I think um, are invaluable when, um, when we're thinking about cultural relevancy, when we are thinking about um, inclusion and acceptance and um, empowerment and um, liberation, all of these things like that are so important that we want to give our kids when we think about this. Um, um, I think it really matters, the, the books that you choose uh, when you're, you're um, starting your school year. And um, when we are asking kids to be really vulnerable uh, for writing workshop, we, wanna, we, wanna, we want them to see themselves in books for sure. We want them to see the world in books. Um, and we also want them to, um, to be able to uh, uh, write about things that are hard. Um, and so in some of these books, they um, like each kindness, my favorite, probably of all of them. Um, great, 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 great Jacqueline Woodson. Um, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, but um, you know, sometimes uh, there are hard things in life. And uh, one way that we figure out how to solve problems or um, figure out how we wanna be in the world is uh, to be write, to be able to write about it. And uh, so the, the mentors that we use for um, what we share to our kids, um, those, are, those are selected and chosen carefully. And all of the books that I shared with you, I, I am so in love with. Hair Love is one of the newest books and, um, that, I've, that I've purchased. And um, I've used it at summer institutes this summer. And uh, everyone, I mean, no one can get enough, everyone can't get enough of it basically. So, uh, um, so anyway, it's a, it's a really, it's a special book, really important book. Uh, um, so day seven, uh, we're going to talk about celebrations and audience, you know, um, I think that it's, as much as we want to really emphasize hard work and process, I think for a writer, it's, it's incredibly powerful to be able to share your writing. And when we celebrate and we share our writing with another person, um, it is a form of publication and it is, uh, it feels as if it's a, you know, it's, I'm writing this, I'm, I might be writing this for me, but I'm also writing it, um, for the other people, you know, and, um, and connecting with other people and helping other people, um, sharing my opinions, uh, which, you know, may help them and, uh, and, and also, um, sharing my voice, you know, so audience is a, is a huge thing for a writer. And one of the things that's so important is that you have lots of celebrations throughout your school year, usually finishing off your unit, which, you know, we talked about earlier on the, the process, uh, the day we talked about the writing process, usually lasts about five-ish five weeks. So um, one thing that's really important to consider is, um, again, having this audience. And an audience um, can be w one person and um, someone that you're writing for. Um, you know, like your, 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 your mother, you wanting to give her a gift of um, a poem about how much you appreciate her. Um, but it also can, um, can be someone that becomes sort of your cheerleader. And so I think for you and your writing and your sort of writing coach, if you will. So I think one of the first things to consider when we're thinking about audience is your writing partner. Who is your writing coach? Who's going to be your writing partner? And how can we establish that early on and um, and nurture that throughout the, the throughout the school year? So in the launching unit, I share the importance of that. How to select your um, your partnerships? Um, it, it takes a lot of um, care, and the teacher needs to you know make that selection um, and. Um, and the things to consider, you know, the cool thing about 
uh, your partner for a writing workshop is the only thing that I think about really, or the most important thing I think about, it's not the only thing, but the most important thing is that person has your back. That person who's your partner is your cheerleader and, and wants the very best and for you to be your very best writing self for you. And so I look a lot of personalities um, to see how kids click and usually takes me uh, and, and I recommend this in the in the launching unit that I've that I've written that um, we don't unveil. We have a big grand, um, uh, you know, sort of uh, a grand unveiling of the partnerships. I had a district in Denver that made it so grand and beautiful that uh, um, it's, it's yeah, it's amazing. Um, but we need that time, those first few weeks of, of school, to really get to know our writers, to get to know who they are as writers and as people, to see how we kind of match them up. And you, you can think about a lot of things um, in, in that consideration. I oftentimes think about um, kids that are a little bit quieter with kids that are a little bit more, um, you know, gregarious, and uh, really thinking a little bit about how you can build on each other's strengths in that way. Um, so that's a big thing for me. But in the end, um, there's not one way to create the partnerships. I just want the kid, I just want those writers to be the most successful they can possibly be in that partnership. And they should be long-term. And so you wanna unveil them when, when you're ready. And I like it to be part of the celebration in the first, in the launching unit. And then they are going to be your partner for a while, you know? You don't, I, I mean, I, I saw my best friend over the weekend. I've known her since we were in sixth grade. You know, you don't just like, you know, have this, um, this person who has your back for, you know, a, a couple of weeks. And then it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to pick somebody new. Partnerships um, should be long. And, and the reason that they should be long is because you, um, you, have, you have to get to know each other as partners and you have to begin to trust each other. You cannot um, really be right about the truths in your life um, and right in honest ways if you don't trust that person and trust takes time. So I recommend that I call, you know, I, I, I coach, I talk to my teachers about um, that they're long-term partners and if they can go all year long in my classroom, I, uh, you know, I, I kept my partners for the entire year and it did wonders, um, especially for this little boy Christian who was a great writer, but incredibly quiet and shy and Leah really got him out of a shell a little bit, which is really fantastic. It was a beautiful, a beautiful friendship that the the two of them had as writing partners. Um, but I always I always recommend at least two months. You need at least two units, two months, a little bit over two months, um, to really invest and um, and coach kids in what it means to be a really a really strong partner. Um, and then if you decide you might choose, you might decide to change up one partnership or you might decide to change up the whole class. I just would caution you to say like, if it's working after those two months, don't change it. You know, it's going to be the most beautiful friendship ever for, for these kids. Um, so keep them as long as you possibly can. And then throughout the year, one of the things that's beautiful about partnerships is not only the idea of audience and, you know, wow, I cannot wait to share this with, with um, you know, the story that I wrote, but I also can't wait to share the strategy that I used with, um, with my partner, Monique. Um, but the other thing I think that is powerful about um, partnerships is you can really um, be there for one another in a positive way where you can... Um, you know, lift each other up and um, expect great things from one another. And so once you, you know, um, unveil these long-term partnerships, then you can in your, in your month, in your six, you know, in your unit, you can carve out time for, for those partnerships to, we, to meet. I always recommend twice a week um, in lieu of a teaching share. You have a teaching share every day. So in lieu of that teaching share, there's there's um, partnership work, and that's that's can be really powerful in the sense of um, also that it's you are not the only teacher in that room, and you are really saying like all of us here know a lot about writing, and we can support each other in that way with with um, with our partner. I like to even um, find out 
goals, you know, so if Monique's my partner, I am responsible to know Monique's goal and she's responsible to know my goal, you know? So I really like once we, we kind of get some traction going and, you know, it might be November or so to, you know, up it up. Um, because once kids, you know, can talk the talk of writing, then you know you're going to see it. It empowers them. It's going to improve the, their writing um, in their, their pieces. So that's what we're wanting to do. We, we're wanting them to be able to talk it um, so then we can see that transfer in their writing and that ownership in their writing. Um, okay, so... Uh, so that's, you know, in the first celebration, that's a big part of the first celebration is meeting and unveiling the unveiling of your partnership. Um, the celebrations should occur um, after every unit and they should be varied. And, and um, you don't want to have this sort of grand celebration inviting parents in every single unit. Um, and you, you also don't want to, you know, um, just uh, be like, oh yeah, we're gonna have our celebration. It's gonna be on such and such date. You know, you'll meet with your partner, woohoo! You know, so it should feel special, but varied, you know, and um, and thinking about um, what, what the work was in the unit can help you to think about what kind of celebration you might want to have. And um, you definitely, you know, ask your kids about it. I think one thing that's really powerful is to, once you, um, are into about three weeks into the unit and you're you're thinking like okay um we, you know i think we're going to celebrate on uh you know september 30th uh it's nice to post that date outside your classroom so the whole of your building can see it and um and they can come in if they want anyone that's not uh in you know um anyone that doesn't have a classroom could come in and be part of that celebration and the other thing with that, when you're posting it, it kind of, it really helps to keep you and your kids on track in that way. And it's very important to start and stop units. Uh, you don't, I mean, first of all, uh, if you're following the standards, the Common Core says, and you're, you're following the Institute Study if, for for Calkins, you you definitely want to um, be sure that you're exposing kids to narrative, information, opinion, and I love poetry, so poetry as well. Um, but it's important to, to, you know, whether you're following the standards or not, for kids to be exposed to different kinds of genres of writing. You just never know what's, um, what's going to help them to see themselves as a writer and to empower them in a sense of like, this is the genre that I'm doing my best work and it speaks to me. Um, I'll never forget this uh, child, um, Ryan, Oh, wow, I can't remember his last name, I don't think. Anyway, um, probably my third year teaching, he was a very bright boy, especially in math and science, not as much of a lover of writing and definitely didn't like poetry. However, nonfiction, that was his thing. And so that was important for him to um, be able to really shine in, in nonfiction when he felt like, you know, poetry was just not his thing, not his genre. So, um, so we want to, we want to end units. And that's the other thing too, is like, if it is not your genre, then you know, there's going to be a new kind of writing and you're, it helps you to kind of keep you motivated, moving forward, engaged, um, and expose you to different kind of writings, to, to writing genres, to figure out what, what kind really speaks to you. Um, and then, um, and so we want to have sort of this, um, this celebration to end it and then we're ready to launch a new unit. So, um, like I said, they, sh they can be varied. Um, I have exactly like the, a really, I, I, I get very excited about the first unit cause I really think about the goals of the first unit and the celebration that I recommend matches those goals. So one of the things, um, you know, to think about is, you know, I have that, I have the, the first unit and, you know, I have some charts and ideas around it. Um, so if we, you know, if, if our paths cross or have crossed, uh, you already know this, um, but if, if hopefully our paths can cross, um, I can really give you a lot of support with what does that celebration look like? And then consider the rest of the year, you know, how can the other celebrations match the, um, the work that I'm doing in the unit. And sometimes, um, and, and then how can I vary it up, but vary it. And, and sometimes you just stick within your class. Um, but also some celebrations, it's really great to move across grade levels or even with that, within that grade. Um, I was thinking about this great district in Long Island, Herricks, I believe is the name of the district. The third grade teachers loved the nonfiction unit 
all of the teachers really got into it. So every year they had the, the celebration was on the same day, all the third grade teachers, they all gathered together, I believe in the, in the gym or cafeteria to have their celebration. So, you know, that's, that's really, that's amazing. So it's like, what well, you know, um, it could be something that just is the kids and, and you haven't have, you know, and your team like that have like embraced and you do a whole team celebration like that, or it could be that you have reading buddies with like a lower grade or an upper grade and you celebrate with that person. Um, and then there's very ways, varied ways to celebrate. One thing I would caution is celebration should last about the time of a um, writing workshop, 45 minutes. And we want kids to be engaged. And if we're sharing our writing, that's a very vulnerable thing. And um, we wanna make sure that the audience really cares about our writing. So, um, and, one, and one thing I would say is, it is incredibly powerful, incredibly powerful to read your writing aloud. So I, I highly recommend that most of your, your celebrations are reading your writing aloud. And, and that said, um, I know years ago, Sometimes we would have celebrations where one child would stand up and everyone would listen and then and they would share and then the next child and so forth and so on until you got through your whole class. That took a long time and often kids were not as engaged by the time you got to the eighth or ninth or tenth writer and then imagine the 25th writer. So that's not fair to that writer who's sharing and pouring their heart and soul and, and brave enough to share out loud. So making sure that um, I always, I always uh, like to have small groups or partnerships, again, depending on the unit. Um, so everyone is engaged. It keeps it the pace and the timing, um, you know, for, at 45 minutes. So it's just like a writing workshop uh, for that day. And, um, and it's a beautiful experience for everyone. And then the other thing that I think is so important with celebrations is the way you're going to publish. So um, this is my, good friend, Monica Pierum from Ocean City Elementary in Worcester County. And I adore this, the way she has displayed this writing because this is a second grade and it looks like a second grade classroom. One of the things that she did that is, is amazing to me, well, first of all, she had the kids promise, like make a promise to their partner, promise to their celebration, and they all signed it. I thought that's really amazing. Like, you know, um, actually celebration promises over here. And, you know, the idea of this is, this is such an important big day and how we need to show up for it and be really serious um, partners in that way. But then the other thing is she has all of her kids represented on this bulletin board. So I don't wanna just have some kids work displayed. I want all my kids work displayed. And she shows all of the revision work and the editing work that they're doing. So it really looks like a second grader wrote this. It's not copied over, it's not typed over. It's got all of the hard work all of the process right here. And for K-1-2, that's important that those bulletin boards really have um, what a first and second, a kindergarten, first, second grader writing looks like. That's a big deal. Um, this is, sorry, ah, my friend, Melanie Fagelson. Um, this, is, this is her, ah, she teaches, she's gonna be teaching fifth grade at PS40 in um, the Lower East Side. And this is part of her bulletin board. And you know, um, one thing, and that's you know, her standing next to it, I don't know if you can tell, but it does, she has the rest of it goes, you know, beyond. But one thing I really love about this is that she's got kids um, and or adults feedback uh, right there on the writing. And, um, and the other thing that I love is that she's got, so the feedback is always positive and it's right there on top of the writer's, the, uh, the writer's piece. The other thing I really love about this is that she's got her writing um, displayed in pockets. So um, when, you, when you do that, you can uh, Xerox um, the entries in the notebook, you can uh, include the draft and the revisions, and then in fourth and fifth grade, you might copy this over. Sometimes you might type it over, 
uh, often you copy it over, it just helps to move the unit along quicker. So you might have like the final product and then all of the hard work behind it so that uh, when anyone walks by that bulletin board, they can look and see and that you're celebrating not just the product, but how did it evolve with the writing process? And I think that's a really, really important thing. Um, in this classroom, one thing I really liked about this is that, again, feedback and pockets, beautiful. Look at the writers up around the bulletin board. I think that's so great. Pictures of the entire class up around the bulletin board. And um, one teacher, uh, I remember, I think this was in a school that I worked with in Columbus, Ohio. She, would just, she did something like this, and she had the partnerships right next to each other, kind of holding up the writer's notebooks, the picture of them, and they were displayed on the bulletin board. Really nice, right? So, celebrations. Uh, when you think about celebrations, and you think about the end of the unit and how you're gonna close the unit, consider your partnerships, creating partners, um, consider personalities and consider how you're going to nurture those partners all year long and uh, and then think about what are your celebration what's your celebration going to be and how is it going to be exciting for every single person in your classroom and mixing it up to support your unit um, and then thirdly how how might you display your writing one of the things I want to share with you is that if you can display your writing outside of your classroom, it can be really powerful. An assistant principal in Worcester County once told, said to me, like, sometimes I go into classrooms and I have a particular reason why I'm going in. Actually, a lot of times that's the case. And so I can't, I don't always think to go over to the bulletin board and look at student work. But when I walk down the hallway and I see student work, I, I can't help myself but to stop and look and read and give feedback. And Pocomoke Elementary in uh, Worcester County, they have bulletin boards outside every one of their classrooms and they have their writing um, displayed outside every one of their classrooms. So you walk down the hallway and on both sides, you see student writing on the walls and it takes your breath away takes your breath away to see all of that. And Kelly Cropper um, is one that has been doing writing workshop. I started with uh, Worcester five or six years ago and she has uh, been one of my number one supporters for workshop and supporters for her team at that school. And you look at her bulletin board, it is stunning. She you know, invites you to, to please respond to her first graders and it's a really exciting thing for her and her kids. Uh, keeps them motivated and excited to want to write more. Uh, so so that, I love that idea, it's so great. So it's the end of our time together. I've had a great seven days. Let's see if I can recap them for you. First day was all about mentorship. That was the first tip I, you know, find a mentor um, when you're doing this really hard work called writing workshop. Um, the second day was all about being a writer yourself and how you can think about that for your kids and, and yourself and, and the, the idea of how when you write for yourself, it impacts you like no, nothing else and you know you need to give this gift to your kids. Um, the third day was a philosophy that this is not about a teaching point, which I talked about that yesterday in a school that I was in, in the, in the Bronx. It was really exciting to think a little bit about the importance of that in the teaching of reading workshop as well as writing workshop, that this is a, this is a, it is a philosophy. We need to think a little bit about our own core values as we think about Brene Brown, and then we need to hold this philosophy and it's the philosophy stems from Camborn's conditions of learning as we, um, we uh, do this thing called writing workshop. Um, the fourth day, ah, oh, not the writing process. I, oh, volume, stamina, independence. Fourth day was all about volume, stamina, independence, and uh, how that can be such a struggle getting kids independent. Um, but I gave you some tips around that. The fifth day was all around the writing process. Such a big deal that kids work hard and they have are on a journey in their writing and they just don't sit down and write. Um, and then the sixth day yesterday was all about conferring, specifically the compliment conference, and then today about celebrations. So I cannot tell you um, how grateful I am for you. Thank you so much for joining me. And again, I would love to support you with your school. If you are considering launching writing workshop, I have a whole unit that gives you so much more than these seven days um, could give you. Uh, that can help you with that. And um, and then I, I have a few more things to say. I know that surprises you because you're like, all right, Christy, should be only 15 minutes. I can't stop talking. 
<laughs> anyway, have a for for some of you, I hope you've had a great start to your school year, and for um, for others of you, like my friend Melanie, you're going to be starting on Tuesday or Wednesday. The teachers I saw yesterday will be starting on Wednesday. Enjoy every single second. What a gift it is to be a teacher and have those um, amazing writers walk through your door. Um, have a great start to your new year. Thanks again. Take care. Bye.